Hello and welcome to The Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Tori and as always I'm joined by my co-host Luke Cutford and special guest Chanel live in London! Oh, oh my god! This week we are talking about little men, but first... We have a wee review, and I really wanted to do this because, as I said, you know, um, I'm sorry, I will let you both talk in a second, but <laughs> this is about me right now. Um, I have a massive ego, and when I do these shows, I get a bigger ego, so I thought I'd read out this review um, and see what you all think of it. Love the show. Would love to analyze Cory. I'm a therapist. <laughs> but that's another matter. <laughs> FYI, Freud was, Anna Freud was kind of a big thing. Ego psychology. Again, fine show. Seems quite of a, a middling review, but they gave five stars, and that's all I care about. I want to hear this person analyse you too. That sounds like a great episode. Oh, thank yeah. you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so usually we start with a question, so I'll ask a question um, to, I guess, everyone here, but mostly to you, Chanel. Chanel, have you ever made a tiny little man? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Um, <laughs> Luke, have you ever made a tiny little man? I've made like gingerbread men. Are those not like your children? Yeah, that's a tiny little man. <laughs> exactly. That's my son you're talking about there. Okay, I did not expect you to start off with I had sex with bread to produce children <laughs> made of gingerbread, but I'm glad we started there. Okay, so has anyone heard of Paracelsus? Huh? I've heard of that. I've never I don't know what it is. I've heard of Paris Hilton. <laughs> mm. Pretty close. I mean, do you want to hazard a guess at who Paracelsus was? A scientist. Uh, <laughs> a mean... questionable scientist. Hey! Hey! <laughs> okay, no, so he was uh, born um, at some point in the 1500s, I guess. My research wasn't that great on this because, um, fun fact, it's really hard to find good history from like 500 years ago because they didn't have the internet. There you go, you can't say we're not educational. Uh, no, so, <laughs> Paracelsus. Uh, yeah, so his name, when he was born, was not in fact Paracelsus. Um, he was born Theophrastus von Hohenheim. But he's also known as Philippus Aurelius Theophrastus Bombastus von Hohenheim. I love the Bombastus. He <laughs> gives it some spice. It's a good middle name. Cory Bombastus Will. <laughs> <laughs> I love will that. what? Tori will bombast. I bet he will. Okay. <laughs> no, so um, between uh, 1517 and 1524, he did some travels. He basically did a gap year for seven years because like every scientist from 100 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago, to be honest, pretty much the same. Every scientist from a long time ago, he was a rich white dude that basically did what he wanted and called it science. Lucky. Okay. Yeah, right? It's you, me against him. Some of them called it founding America, to be fair. What? what? Rich white dudes going around the world. Some of them called it founding America, not being scientists. That's true. That is true. Yeah, but I mean, they did also do slavery, Luke, so... That's true. They How do you feel about that? <laughs> what are your thoughts? Uh, bad to, to more bad. <laughs> do I pass? That's an acceptable answer. Thank you. <laughs> All right. For now. No, okay, so... <laughs> Um, he didn't go to America, no, he went to Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, England, Germany, Scandinavia, Poland, Russia, Hungary, Croatia, Constantinople, Rhodes, and maybe Egypt. So he did a little bit of Africa. Not totally racist. So, um, during this, he basically found out that everyone sucked at medicine. This was back when people were uh, bloodletting. Do you know what that is? I do. Do you want to tell us? Uh, and now I'm questioning whether I do. It's when you just you start. Oh, let's just bleed it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, yeah, li literally. Like you. Oh, you're literally. a bit sick. You got too much blood. No. That's that's a common problem. Yeah. See, this dog knows. Too it's much okay. blood. It's okay. It's okay. We're not going to be bloodletting today. <laughs> Does she just drink your blood? Is that what it is? She's she looks expectant. <laughs> For the listener at home, there's a dog on this stage. <laughs> Nah. Remember, this is a podcast. Nah. <laughs> what kind of things do you think they were doing other than bloodletting? Like at that point, what kind of what do you think the medicine of the time was? Oh, leeches. Yes. Sticking leeches on people. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, prayer. Prayer. I was gonna say uh -huh. a bit of just 
We'll hope for the best. <laughs> oh, what about victim blaming? Because you've got a womb. That's why you're you ill. Pox ridden wench. <laughs> there was there were some problems at his time, medically speaking. Um, Luke, you might know about this. Syphilis, heard of it? I am aware of syphilis, yes. I, w- I refute your accusation. No, we did an episode on it. That's oh, all I'm saying. Oh. Oopsie. <laughs> Here I go projecting again. Uh, yes, we did an episode. I'm sure we did, probably. We did, we did. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to tell everyone and Chanel what the episode was about? I would not. It was about syphilis. And? And the early treatment of syphilis. Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Funny you oh, forget that one. Oh, yeah? yeah, that's the famous, the famous one. Look at you, Chanel, crossing your legs, or judging me. I'm waiting Do you remember the, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment episode of Psy Guys? I don't think you do. N- no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you seem very, very, again, look, I, I'm sorry to call you racist again, but you seem very, very, like, happy to lord that particular episode over us. Okay, so the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, for anybody who doesn't know, um, was a experiment where they like, basically gave syphilis to like a bunch of black people to sort of see what happens, and they kind of got away with it because the people were black. They and had to apologize. Oh, like, how long later? Like thirty years. Ah, oh. most of them were dead, but they still said sorry. Didn't they specifically withhold a treatment yeah. from those people? Yeah. Yeah. We want to see what happens. I'll yeah. wait and see. I'll wait and see. <laughs> I told you. <ya. laughs> No, so uh, syphilis was a problem, and they did not know how to solve it. But this man, he came up with the brilliant idea of giving people mercury. Mercury is really poisonous, everyone. It, it's, it will kill you. So it will cure the syphilis insofar as you'll have mercury poisoning and be crazy and or dead. Which, which would you prefer? I've never had syphilis, so I don't know. <laughs> but I'm going to hold out and say I'd rather have syphilis. I feel like there's more stigma associated with the syphilis. But being crazy and dead. Yeah. Dead may be, maybe that's not, there's not a lot of uh, prejudice against being dead. Maybe we should have more prejudice against being dead. But I don't think there's, I think there is quite a lot of prejudice against being crazy. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay. I feel like if you're crazy and dead though, you've kind of won. Because you've got to respect the dead. Yeah, right? that's true. Like if Trump were to die tomorrow, God willing, um, <laughs> people would venerate him, I think. And I'd be amongst that crowd. Um, <laughs> So he's oh, he just waiting for his opportunity to praise Trump. <laughs> and Trump being dead is exactly the right opportunity. Yeah, no one can tell me off for it. What am I doing wrong? Praising Donald Trump. <laughs> you can't praise, just because Hitler's dead, you don't get to praise him, Cory. Oh, it's my great Aunt Brenda's favourite line. <laughs> I didn't like her when she was alive and I'm not going to like her now she's dead. I like I the repeat. idea that your great Aunt Brenda's favourite phrase also includes the Cory bit at the end. Yeah. You can't just praise Hitler just because he's dead, Cory. She did say that. Great Don't like how many, ni- how many times our names are being said in the same sentence. So I'm going to quickly move us on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, you're, you're so right. I mean, these people at this time thought that sin was the cause of disease. So there was miners' disease. and he, Miners as in not children, as in the people that dig. Which I guess nowadays could be children, but with mm. labour laws. But you Maybe know. then as well. Oh my God, minor miners. <laughs> Oh, what, what are your kids? Uh, minor, minor, minors. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That is that better. Yeah, okay. Let's do that again. Yeah. So what I'm going to do in the edit is just cut out that awkward middle silence. And actually, could you get some more laughs? Ha, 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 ha. That was way too much. It wasn't that good. No, just a little one for if, you know, I make a little joke. Okay, good. Yeah, you're going to be hearing that laugh a lot um, when you listen to this back. <laughs> Uh, no, so um, this guy, yeah, he was basically the first person to discover that um, doing prayers and whatnot doesn't do much for disease. Um, he brought chemistry into disease, now into medicine, and that is a good thing generally. Most of your medicines are chemicals. Shocker. Um, unfortunately, he did, as I said, start off with some pretty bad chemicals like mercury. Uh, he also uh, was the father. Father. What's my accent? Father of homeopathy. Does anyone know what homeopathy is? Yeah, it's like that. Uh, ooh, have we got any homeopaths in the audience? <laughs> is that a crazy gay it's person? It's like that, supposedly, fake medicine. No, it's fake medicine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you, oh my God, are you a homeopath? No. Oh, thank God. Ooh. I have two science degrees. 
Oh. oh! You're more qualified than any of us. Oh, that is true. Yeah, we, so we have a little challenge for you tonight, don't we? You've got to bring up your degrees and make it fit in with the topic. Oh, yeah, I will do. Don't yeah. worry. I'm going to find a way to, to, I was going to say slip it in, but... Yeah, you can't slip one of them in. I'm going to be honest with you. You can't. That was, that's only funny if you know what your degree is in. Can you say what it is? Yeah. I mean, uh, horses. Horses. <laughs> You can have a degree in horses. Yeah, equine-based science subjects. That is just, that is a fancy way of saying horse degree. <laughs> it's the pony club. Wow. With paper. You never told me you were a horse girl. Yeah, well, lots of people, I think, don't get it because I'm brown. So me. We need, we need fewer of them. No, you're lovely. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so my notes here say that um, Paracelsus cured the plague-stricken town of Sturzing. He was German. There's gonna be a lot of German in this. Uh, he cured people of a plague by taking some of their feces and uh, putting it on a needle and then feeding it, feeding it to them in some bread. So a literal shit sandwich. Sorry, did you say putting it on a needle or putting it on an eel? A needle? <laughs> I see the confusion here, yes. Yeah. Um, no, it was a needle. Funnily enough, harder to procure than an eel in To those be fair, times. back then there was a bunch of medicine around eels as well, so. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I what? mean, it probably worked better. Why did it have to be a needle so to it put it on the bread? So it wasn't very much. Do you want to eat a lot of shit in your sandwich or just a I little mean, bit? I mean, if you're eating shit anyway. <laughs> you may as well commit. You're right. Yeah. Okay, cheers for eating a lot of shit in your sit- shit sandwich. <laughs> oh, I wow. Like- and cheers for not eating a shit sandwich at all. <laughs> but cheers for eating a sandwich with a tiny needle worth of shit on it. There we go. So, what was I saying? He fed people, yeah, literal human feces, and they thought that cured the plague. Again, may have just killed them, but if you die of eating shit, you didn't die of plague. <laughs> what else did he do? Oh, he made a little man. Do you want to know about? Do you want to know about his little man? Go on then. Okay, right. Well, I'll tell you about that in a second because I'm actually going to tell you about something else. Um, <laughs> have you ever heard of alchemy? Yes. Woo! Yeah. Some some cheers for alchemy in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Some alchemists here? Some full metal alchemists here? (laughs) Fucking weebs, Jesus. No, a full metal alchemist is an anime for anyone who has a life. Um, I've watched it, I know this, come on. I I don't, oh wow. Do you know about alchemy? Is that the thing where you like turn things into other things? Like you you turn like metal into gold and stuff? Gold is a metal. Yeah, but it, it's a fancy metal. It is, yeah, no, that is, yeah. That is, that is what alchemy Thank is. Thank you. Yeah, no, like the Philosopher's Stone yeah. and stuff. Mm. You know about that, huh? Indeed. Uh? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, alchemy. Uh, yeah, no, it is basically, uh, it's like the precursor to chemistry. And this guy was big on it. As I said, he brought chemistry into medicine, but a lot of his chemistry was alchemy and not actual chemistry. So, for example, uh, what are like the... Th- what are the main components of the world? Like, what makes stuff up? Earth, wind, and fire. I was going to say that too. Sulfur, salt, and mercury. Obviously. Really? Yeah. Sulfur that wasn't s- in Avatar, though, so... Yeah, to be fair. <laughs> um, are you not a sulfur bender? No? <laughs> <laughs> Smells awful. <laughs> that's just someone that farts a lot, really, I was right? Say, that's <laughs> vegetarian that's had a bad curry. I mean... Really, it's just being an airbender. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he thought, essentially, right, like, um, that everything could be broken down into sulfur, into mercury, and salt. That, was, that made up everything, and he proved this. There was an experiment actually proving this. You can do this for yourself at home. If you get a bit of wood, right, you burn that wood, you've got your three elements right there. What do you get after it, right? You've got gases escaping, that's sulfur, right? You've got mercury, which is liquid which is like the flame or something right <laughs> or something or something look i uh, this is nonsense okay <laughs> if i make it up it's probably more correct than them um and the ash is salt that that was what science was 500 years ago so uh, that's what he thought uh, do you want to talk about the, hum- the homunculus uh the homunculus so- is like this section of the brain by the way what the hell is the tangent here no idea how you got to this um <laughs> but the homunculus is like a section of the brain where like if you imagine Imagine like a cross section of your brain. It's like the area of your brain where all your different parts of your body are like mapped to this area. Uh, do you know, do you, anyone know about this? Yeah. yeah. And so you may well know more than I do. Uh, the weird thing and the fun thing about the homunculus is like stuff is not wired up 
to the brain in the same order as it's actually like as you would consider it so like i'm fairly certain got any foot fetishists in the crowd Woo! so i'm fairly certain like the, the area that deals with the feet is the, at, like right next to the area that deals with the genitals and like that is like i think one theory as to where like a foot fetish might come from right and so if you imagine like like a line it's like head nose mouth ears eyes and then all the way down like body arms etc along the sort of um axis of the brain along the sort of length of the brain that is the homunculus this part of the brain that deals with like connecting our sensing organs to our brain in a certain order that was longer than it needed to be first time you said that oh <laughs> Sex jokes. Uh, no, that's not what a homunculus is, asshole. <laughs> it's like so off topic. Why did you let me go on for so long? I kind of wanted a break, to be honest. <laughs> you were what's doing it, well. What's it, well, it clearly wasn't. What's a homunculus? No, I mean, like, you're not wrong. So it is, that is, we do call that a homunculus. It's just the oh. wrong one. Okay, a homunculus is like a little person who, like, so there was a picture in my primary school. Children? Of, like, person. And then inside their brain was another little person and they had like a bunch of levers as if, as if you're like, imagine like your spirit or your soul or whatever is like inside your brain. And there's a little person in there and that's really you inside this big meat robot. That's another thing we call a homunculus. Is that like the right that, one? That Pixar film. Like Inside Out, yeah. yeah. They're all like little sections of the homunculus. And Tori's now going to tell me that's not what he means. It's not the one that I'm talking about, no. <laughs> This all night. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. No, okay, so uh, shall I tell you what the, hum- the hum- 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 homunculus is? Please. Is it a little man? It is what well, could be a little woman, Luke, or a little person of indeterminate gender. <laughs> the homunculus has been around for a while. If you watch Full Metal Alchemist, you will know what a homunculus is uh, because, again, that's most of my research for this episode. Um, no, so a homunculus is literally just a little person. How do you think you might make one? Chanel, you look like you're thinking. What do you think? If I, if I came to you and I said, Chanel, hey, don't ask questions. Yeah. Um, I need in about 60 days, yeah. um, I need a, a small child. And I, I cannot find anyone to carry this child for me. Here is some of my seed. What do you do with it? In 60 days. 60 days. Or 40. Thereabouts. Can I just refuse the... <laughs> or do I have to steal a child? You don't need to steal a child. That is one way to solve the problem. Well, I can't make one in 60 days. <laughs> I think you find your cat. Huh? <laughs> what, what just happened there? I don't know. Shall we move? I'm just disturbed about the idea of Cory approaching you and saying, here is some of my seed. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful gift. <laughs> Not many people get that. I keep it very secure. <laughs> God. So if you want to make a homunculus, the, f- the first way that they started doing it, it involved um, you, actually. Me? No, a sheep, a you. Oh. Uh? <laughs> no, so um, Plato was talking about this. Um, essentially, you need some semen, um, a cow or a you, and animal blood. Luckily, ewes and cows, full of animal blood. <laughs> So basically what you do is you artificially inseminate the cow or you, um, and then you, oh God, you take the genitals um, and you smear it with the blood of another animal and then you exclusively feed it the blood of another animal. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, it's not so witchcraft. I too have ADHD, mm-hmm. so I struggle to follow logical path. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry, there wasn't one there. I... <laughs> I can't remember if this is real or not. It feels like in the past people just said things and nobody tried yeah. them. When, when are we pretending this was real? People were doing this. Yeah, but like, they weren't, but it wasn't succeeding. You don't know that. ding a ling is that the ad bell? I think it is, but it's, it's rather quiet this time. Well, Luke, we want to keep a big old secret about this Psy Guys merch. Yes. 
please do not tell anybody and do not purchase any of it. Otherwise, people will find out. They might see you wearing our merch or displaying our merch and think, oh, wow, what a cool person. And I'll tell you this, as a cool person myself, having people think you're a cool person can be very, very stressful. Yeah, we can't have that. We also can't have you supporting the show to exist that you're enjoying right now. Yeah, so absolutely under no circumstances should you go to normalcitizen.store and pick up some Psy Guys merch. Some Psy Guys merch like beanies and posters and t-shirts and calendars and cool stuff like that. Definitely don't go to that store and buy that. Goodness me, that's an awful lot of stuff that I'm not going to purchase. Absolutely, Luke. Now let's get back to the show before anyone listens to us. God, I really hope we got away with that one. He was chatting about basically making a man in 40 days. A little man, of course. A tiny little one. Without the help of... Yes. Out of interest, is the theory that is 40 days the, the sort of gestation period for, the, for a you to make a sheep, a baby sheep? Is that the point? Is that why it's that amount of time? No. Uh, I'm what? still hung up. I'm still hung up on that. It's like, is it human sperm? But with a you, or is it? Yeah. Well, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get a human baby out of sheep sperm, are you? Think about it. Science. You're not going to get a human baby out of sheep. What do they teach you in horse school, huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> no. So um, yeah, they they thought you know using a cow. Um, or, or a you would be a good way to do it. But then they realized there's a much better way. And Paracelsus was the one that came up with this. Um, bear in mind, his name is Philip von Hohenheim. Um, Paracelsus, or that other long name that I said. Uh, basically, instead of using a, uh, a cow or a sheep, he used a horse. Ah. ah. This wow. is why you're the guest on this show. <laughs> so what can you tell us about having sex with horses? <laughs> Well, since I'm not Catherine the Great, I uh, <laughs> don't have much to add to that. However, I've been to many a stud yard, and <laughs> honestly, don't get in the way, because those guys are rowdy, and it's very dangerous. <laughs> Sounds a lot like heaven. <laughs> That's a gay club for anyone. Who does. <laughs> well, do you love homophobia? <laughs> cheering for it, please. Please. Gay, I can. Being gay doesn't mean you can hate gay people. If it does. <laughs> Should we get back to having sex with horses? Yes. Okay. A horse expert in here. Thank yeah. you. No, so, um, right, you can, you can tell me whether this is correct or not. So, um, you, you get a horse that's a surrogate mother, right? Um, and then you get a man. And then you get, Luke, yeah. you get his semen. Yes. Can you... Uh, there's a few ways, but sure. <laughs> what? Well, I can imagine a few. How many? How, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm going to disrupt this. How many ways are there to get semen from a man? Well, well, you could you could m- manually get it, like by rubbing it. You could you could seduce the man and then like just quickly run away just as he's about to go. You could cut open his ball sack. And get it that way. That's three. Hey, can you think of any more, Chanel? Well, I actually had a friend who was a rhino fluffer. And she used to work at a zoo. And she had to wank off the rhinos. Did she have to? Well, did she have to? Well, I mean, she could have got a different job. Oh. But it was in her job description. God, it's rhino wanking day again. <laughs> My arms are... Oh. God, why are they always so horny? <laughs> you could buy it off him. What? Off the rhino. Off, no, off, just off the man. Just buy, and then, then he, then he's got lots of different ways he could get it. All the other three, are, for a start, he could cut his own balls open. Anyway, so three ways, four if you count buying. Yeah. So you get semen from a man in a non-invasive way, I guess. Um, And then you put that semen inside of an animal womb to, and I quote, putrefy for 40 days uh, before a little man is born. Now, (laughs) sorry, can we just go back? Earlier on I said that people just said stuff in the past and nobody succeeded and then they carried on saying it. Mm -hmm. Anything, Anything to say about that? Did this ever work? Obviously not. But did, like, why were they saying it? Because a little man was born. No, 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 no. Why were they saying it? We're a podcast. We can literally say anything we want 
and no one gets to fact check it. Have you seen Joe Rogan? We can, we can literally lie. Like, I, the sun is green. There you go. Mm. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Can you see it? This happened, and then Mr. Tumnus came out, and then that was Narnia. To be fair, I think the sun might be blue. Mr. Tumnus would get it. <laughs> I'm just saying, right, cheers for it. Like, would Mr. Tumnus get it? <laughs> Luke, would you give it to Mr. Tum- How would you get Mr. Tumnus' sperm? How would I get... I'd ask him nicely. <laughs> I, uh, Mr. Tumnus, please. I have one wish in this world. <laughs> Give me your seed. <laughs> and Mr. Tumnus would provide. This is so not what I thought I was going to be talking about this evening. Yeah, I'm not joking. Like, you were stressing about this. So Chanel, little little peek behind the curtain. Chanel was stressing about like, oh no, I don't know a lot about science. I, 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 I want to like, I want to be able to like, I want to be able to contribute to the scientific conversation. How do you feel about that now? Horse dicks. <laughs> I helped. Yeah. Sci Guys fans love a horse dick. That's. Oh my god! I'm so sorry. Wow. <laughs> that like that didn't that didn't make. I'm gonna so um. Make it like, <laughs> if you want to make your homunculus do something, um, instead of making it do magic, you can um educate it with the greatest care and zeal until it grows up and begins to display intelligence. That's from Paracelsus himself. So it's not, it's not nonsense, because you're teaching the, the little man. You're not, you're not just making him do magic tricks. Do you know what this reminds me of? Back when they had, you know, them little gooey alien things in the eggs? Oh. And there was always someone who was like, I put both of mine in one egg and a baby was born. And then you were all at home like, come on. Yeah, where are what? those people now? Yeah. Are any of you that person? I feel like one are of Are you that person? The, uh, no. Are you the person who said... To be fair, I, when I was a child, I was claiming that I made badgerbadgerbadger.com, so we're all full of shit. But what? Were you really that person? And you didn't do it? Do you want to admit your lie now? I admit my lie. You, you, you. you can come up on stage if you want and admit... <laughs> sorry, please. No, no, please. We, we no, forgive don't. you. We forgive you. I, I don't just actually. mean I don't. I was going to say don't. I don't. Okay. I put it on par with the person in the zombie movie who's like, I haven't been bit. Yeah, we all know you. someone like that, though, don't we? I'm looking at them right now. I'm looking at yeah, you. What does that mean? It means <laughs> Noah. You would absolutely let everyone get killed because you would not tell us you've been bitten. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he said it's a secret, and I'm gonna move on. So, um, Paracelsus made a little man by putting cum in a horse, and <laughs> every time you say Paracelsus, I just hear Paris Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, Paris Hilton put semen in a horse, and... <laughs> no, that's the libelous bit that Paris tells us. <laughs> I, that's what I said. So he or she put semen in a horse um, and said that you need to teach it so that it gets smart. Um, now, uh, he said that God revealed this to him, and, you know, there are some other ways of doing it as well. So we put it in a horse, right? But I've also heard you can do it in a totally different way. You, you, like, who has a horse lying around these days, right? Probably Chanel. <laughs> I sold it to buy these teeth. Um, <laughs> you sold a horse for teeth? Yes. That feels, I don't know why, I just feel, they feel like they shouldn't be on sale. Anyway. Uh, well, I think of them now every time I smile, so. <laughs> I fine. feel like a horse should cost more than teeth. Yeah. He right? didn't. But the horse has teeth. <laughs> exactly. So the horse, when you buy a horse, you're buying teeth and the rest of the horse. That's true. So. So you lost out here, actually. Yeah. You had a full set of teeth you could have used, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just shave them down. Or did That's you keep true. the teeth? I didn't even th- He still has those teeth. Oh, okay. So I'll move on. Um, basically, after finding out that horses are rather hard to procure, you know, mm. he thought, what's easy to find? A gourd. Does anyone know what a gourd is? A gourd? Like a cloth. Is it not- a, no, like a like a, a pumpkin. Yeah, like a pumpkin type thing. Mm. So don't go around his house at Halloween. Um, he put jizz inside of it. He filled <laughs> in a pumpkin. Yeah, he filled a pumpkin with jizz, and that's where white pumpkins come from. No. <laughs> I'm never gonna look at a Starbucks pumpkin spice latte the same way again. <laughs> you could also then get your jizz um, and just let it putrefy for as long as possible. Can you stop saying putrefy? It's the technical term. Putrefaction is the last stage of death after mortis, mortis, rigor mortis, and putrefaction. 
Right. Okay, so Paracelsus, um, as I said, he made, he made a little man, and um, no, this is all, in fact, nonsense. Um, what I'm trying to get across here is that this dude, 500 years ago, was like the father of like a lot of medicine. He is the reason that we do a lot of the things that we do now. He thought, you know, um, anything can be poisonous. The dose makes the poison was his thing, you know? Like, for example, I could be a very pleasant person. You spend more than 15 minutes with me? Yeah? Okay, 15 minutes. I am horrible. Oh, God. Really horrible to be around. And it's the same. Like, you know, a little bit of cyanide. Fine. Too much. Dead. Water's the same. You, that's the whole thing, right? Like, the dose makes the poison. Um, and he also thought that, um, you know, medicine could just be poisonous things uh, in very, very small doses, which isn't untrue, right? Yeah. This is what I find wild about humanity. Someone can come up with actual good things, but also be like, what about a cum gourd? <laughs> that's basically it, isn't it? <laughs> and that's why, uh, sort of, a, what's the word when you, like, a, appeal to... Um, authority. Appeal to authority. Like, there's a bunch of people in history who've like done amazing things, and then they've also, also believed in like a bunch of nonsense. Like some of the most amazing scientists from, you know, the last 100, 200 years were like all eugenicists because mm-hmm. everyone was a eugenicist back then. So if you want to go, well, this per- we all like this person's this thing that this person did, and they were a eugenicist, therefore. Let's all be... No, like... <laughs> Why do you always find a way to bring up eugenics, man? Because loads of people were eugenics. Winston Churchill was a eugenicist. That's the true. guy fighting Hitler, the guy who we have statues of everywhere, he was like, yeah, these guys... Th- let's, let's do eugenics and let's also do things to India. It's, Piers like, Morgan, cool. like, literally sat up in his chair wherever he is just then when you said <laughs> that. He was like... <laughs> Can we get a cheer for eugenics? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just testing the limits here, guys. <laughs> I want to see. Homophobia, okay. Eugenics, bad. Right. I, the line is somewhere in the middle of there. I really don't know where it is. Where do we land on racism, everyone? Cheers for racism. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so to the second person that cheered, I want you to know that the first person was a person of color. You are not. <laughs> so we've got one racist and one funny person. Um, <laughs> up on stage. Wait, hold on. Yeah, up on stage. Racist, funny. And Luke's here, hi. <laughs> so, no, you're so right. Like, that's kind of why I wanted to do an episode on this guy, because he discovered so much cool stuff. He cured diseases. Um, he, he basically, <laughs> he was the first guy to say, hey, maybe, like, in medicine, we should think about chemicals and stuff. Like, maybe, maybe we shouldn't just be making people bleed a lot until they stop complaining about being ill. Maybe we should, like do something about them being ill. Um, But he also was, yeah, a guy that thought if you come into a fruit or into a horse, that it would make a person. Which I guess nowadays with technology, probably, probably possible. Now, I have a quick question here because obviously he didn't make a little person by doing this. But what I do want to know is, did he try it? I think he was too busy, Luke. He was too busy... No, no, he did try it. (laughs) (laughs) He died 39 days later. (laughs) Such a shame. No, that's not true. I don't know. (laughs) Because imagine if he didn't try it and then like, imagine the universe in which he didn't try it because he was just making stuff up. But then if he did try it, it actually did work. No, these, these alchemists were, and it's weird when you look into alchemy, right? There is a lot of science to it, right? There's a lot of things where, wherein, you know, it almost makes sense. It almost makes sense. I just don't think any of them ever tried it. And if they did, they were working with a lot of lead. Do you guys know about lead poisoning? <laughs> yeah, here's, that's probably why um, scientists towards the end of their lives started going like literally crazy and coming up with all this stuff because they poisoned themselves with their chemicals. Uh, but no, he didn't actually try it, Luke, unfortunately. So when did he come up with this then? Was it at the beginning or when he was Lally? I mean, probably somewhere about the middle. Like, look, honestly, he was he was switching between he was like he was saying sulfur is the the core of everything at the same time as saying don't feed people poison it kills them at the same time as saying bleeding too much is bad you need blood in your body at the same time as saying if you're ill it's not because you've got an illness just just an illness debuff on you it's because one of your humors is out of whack and speaking of humor that's out of whack this is the end of our no um <laughs> Jesus. No, so, um, yeah, that's basically kind of all I've got on this dude. He fucked horses and ewes and gourds. 
and still couldn't make a child. <laughs> so, do we want to do maybe a quick fire quiz? Dun 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 dun. Okay. Sex with horses edition. <laughs> You're in it, so win it. <laughs> no, so the rules for the quick fire quiz are the same as always. I'll ask one question. That's one question between the two of you. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer wins. What do they win, Luke? Cory's seed. That's not yours to give. <laughs> but luckily, I did bring some with me. <laughs> what's your buzzer, Luke? Oh. And Chanel, what's your buzzer? <gasps> Donkey noise. Yeah. Thought you were a horse girl. Yeah, well, we've got to switch up a bit. <laughs> what is a donkey if not a smaller, angrier horse? Mm. A homunculus horse. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yeah. A round of applause for that. Come on. Okay, so my question for you is, <clears throat> can you give me one of Paracelsus's many names? Oh. <gasps> oh. Chanel? <laughs> no, that wasn't nah, Chanel. <laughs> Bombastic side eye. <laughs> yes! Well done! Congratulations! Thank you. You won the episode. Your prize is my seed. <laughs> You offer, to be fair, you did offer it at the start of the episode. Hypothetically. Yeah, well, now, now it, it has come to fruition. Next minute, run into Sainsbury's. And you got any gourds? And you've got 40 days to make a little man. I guess I'll see you in 40 days then. Um, You're not going to see her the entire time. She's going to complete I've got blank. to raise yeah. the little man by myself. <laughs> You're not do, You're leaving it inside a gourd to putrefy. Right? I don't need to, what? It's not like you're, you're walking around with it all the time, you can leave it in the sun or something. I feel very unsupported. <laughs> Remind myself of my father. You know, if I knew him. Um, <laughs> I, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm a walking stereotype. No, that is, that is it for our episode, I guess. Great place to end it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching on stream. Uh, and, and thank you for listening. I'm just going to do all of these so that I don't have to worry about the You're edit. You're going to do the outro? Nah. We want to see it. Nah. We want to see it. I can't do it. I can do it. Okay. Uh, do you want me to try and do it? Do you want to try and do it? Okay. I'll try. All right. Okay, so that is all from us. And thank you for listening. I want to say a special thank you to all of our patrons. A special, extra special thank you to Donito and Glitch Rabbit. And thank you for listening. You can find the full references to this episode in the description. Subscribe to new episodes every Monday. And why not leave a nice wee review? You can... Uh, contest at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and on SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. Yeah. At gmail.com. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. You can follow me at Not Corey everywhere. I'm just now realising that I forgot to explain to you this really weird bit we do at the end. Just say where people can follow you. I want you to leave this in unedited. Yeah. This whole thing. Shamwell zero on some things and then without the zero on other things. I can't remember which things those are, but... You want to dox yourself? I mean, I've done it before, so why not? This is my dog! <laughs> <laughs>